Hey there. This past August marks the 20th anniversary of the Super Nintendo. And even though I'm a bit late to this topic, I'd really like to throw in my two cents about it. Many people consider this to be the greatest home video game console ever released, and I can wholeheartedly agree, to a certain extent. While it's not my favorite console, that honor goes to the Nintendo 64, I can say that in terms of its library, the Super Nintendo is superior to any other console ever released before or since. The amount of stellar games on this system is simply staggering. The Nintendo 64 is my favorite console because it holds some of my fondest childhood memories. Without it, I really wouldn't be the same person I am today. As crazy as it sounds, Nintendo really has shaped my life. I love the Nintendo 64, but I won't be the first to admit that it kinda has a disappointing library. Not the first party games, of course, not at all. They're some of my favorite games of all time. But in terms of third party games, the Nintendo 64 is generally pretty lackluster. Not the Super Nintendo. Every system has its misses, but the Super Nintendo has so many hits, it outshines anything less than halfway decent. Well, usually. I personally think that the Super Nintendo has the best library of any console ever released. And that's coming from somebody who owns only... 12 games. So today, in honor of one of the greatest pieces in gaming history, I'd like to talk about my experiences with the Super Nintendo. It was 2011, my fifth grade school year. At that time, I had had my Nintendo 64 for a little over one year. My family had owned a Wii since either 2007 or 2008, but I began to learn about retro video games through a couple of friends and YouTube in late 2009. Something about them really struck my interest. Not to mention, just having video games hooked up to a TV in my room would be pretty EXCELLENT! EXCELLENT! By sixth grade, I still loved my Nintendo 64, but I wanted to branch out a bit more. At the time, I also had a Game Boy Advance SP, and through that system, I was introduced to Metroid Zero Mission. And I love me some Metroid Zero Mission. But I had always heard of this elusive game called Super Metroid that was supposedly even better than Metroid Zero Mission. So I promptly picked up a Yobo FC Twin off of eBay. With it came Super Mario Bros. Duck Hunt, Super Mario World, Super Tennis, and Super Metroid. Well, actually, I purchased it separately, hence it being a Japanese copy. At the time, it was the cheaper way to go, but I got them on the same day. I played the crap out of those games. I would wake up early, go to the living room, pop in a game, and sit there for an hour or so before I had to be rushed to school. And as soon as I got home, I'd go back to that TV, pop in a new game, and start a new adventure. Over the next few years, my collection for both the NES and the Super NES slowly grew. Then, one summer day in 2013, my grandma presented me with a pristine Super Nintendo that she had gotten at a thrift store for only $10. Since then, the Super Nintendo stood on its own in my collection. Just another system that had a couple decent games on it. Only within the last year have I really come to appreciate the grandeur of the Super Nintendo. What an incredible system. Built around innovation, it came at the perfect time when games were becoming more of a form of art than just simple mindless fun. When developers mastered their craft, for the most part, and created some of the most incredible gaming experiences in history. In fact, let's do a short countdown, right now. Each one of these easily has a place on my list of the greatest games of all time. You're all allowed to disagree with me. This list is only my opinion, based on my personal experiences. With that being said, here are my top 3 Super Nintendo games of all time. This is easily my favorite side-scrolling Mario game. The amount of care put into every detail in this game is simply astounding. In terms of design, this is probably the greatest Mario game ever made. 
It's a bit more exciting, a bit more challenging, a bit more graphic, a bit more colorful, a bit more realistic, a bit more levels, a bit more secret, a bit more enemies, a bit more friends, a bit more sound, a bit hotter, a bit cooler, a bit weird, a bit more revolutionary, a bit more Mario, a bit more of what you It's pretty flawless. In my opinion, it's probably one of the most perfect games to ever be played on a television screen. I really can't recommend it enough. If you're a Mario fan and you somehow haven't played this game, I implore you to stop this video right now and go and play it. Go ahead. I'll wait. Many consider this to be not only the greatest Metroid game, but one of, if not the greatest game of all time. While I can't say that, I can wholeheartedly agree that Super Metroid is easily the best Metroid game. Kind of. It's really hard for me. I think I enjoy Metroid Zero Mission just a little bit more, and that's simply because of nostalgia. Super Metroid is by far the better game. It has an incredible sense of atmosphere. You really feel like you are alone on this huge, expansive planet. The planet feels really alive, with its incredible graphics, fantastic music, and creative character designs. Its story, which was built up in the original Metroid, and Metroid 2 The Return of Samus, is really special. It can be very emotional, and you can live through the characters all without a single line of dialogue. It tells a wonderful mother and child story, the player being the mother and the baby Metroid being the child. By the end of the game, you genuinely care for this little guy, and he's just a two-dimensional sprite. If you don't know what I'm talking about, stop this video again and go play it right now. Go ahead, I can wait some more. Pretty incredible, right? Super Metroid is simply a masterpiece. If you didn't listen to me earlier, play this game. You won't regret it. Earthbound has changed my life. The weird thing is, I'm not really sure I know why. What in the world do I even say? Unlike Super Mario World and Super Metroid, Earthbound is not a perfect game. In many ways, it's kind of flawed. That comes with the gameplay and it being a JRPG. The battle system, which I think works fantastically for boss battles, is just monotonous for overworld enemies. The inventory system is too small and annoying to deal with. It suffers from a lot of slowdown, the characters move slowly with next to no way of increasing their on-screen speed, as well as a few other things. But there's something about it. Gosh, what in the world do I even say? Personally, I think Earthbound has the best graphics on the Super Nintendo. As controversial as that statement may be, I highly stand by it. They're stylized in a way that makes them feel timeless. I think it's as close to cell shaded graphics as you can get on the Super Nintendo. This game's music is also pretty stellar. Other than maybe three or four of the battle themes, every piece of music is unique, memorable, and matches the moods of their situations. It's without a doubt my favorite soundtrack on the system. Its presentation, story, and especially its personality is what makes this game work so well. At least I think so. The story, while simple, 
is executed extremely well. The writing is phenomenal. The world doesn't take itself seriously, but it tackles real-world serious issues. Cults, human sacrifice, kidnapping, death, child abuse, prostitution, etc. While the world of the game doesn't linger on its harsh themes, it keeps the player thinking. The characters, while not incredibly complex, are just... And I don't know. Technically, they really don't do much, but by the end of the game upon my first completion, I considered them the greatest characters of any game I had ever played. I'm still not really sure why. They just felt so... real and raw. The ending is probably the most satisfying ending to any story ever. I'm not going to give it away. You really have to experience it to know what I'm talking about. Honestly, I shed a few tears during the credits. So what is it about this game? Why do some people absolutely love it, like me, or hate it with no in-between? I'm not totally sure. It's probably one of the most unique games I've ever played. Even if I hadn't enjoyed the game, I could at least respect how original it was. This game feels real, like a living and breathing world. Like the world still exists even when you're not playing the game. I really can't put into words how I feel about this game. It's a piece of art, and it's undeniably my favorite Super Nintendo game. Maybe my favorite game of all time. In closing, the Super Nintendo is a wonderful system. If you have memories of owning one as a kid, hold on to them. There's really nothing more I can say. If you don't own a Super Nintendo, get one. You really won't regret it. This has been Gamer Sketch, signing out.